Hey everyone, my name is Perry. I'm an electrical engineer and today we're going to watch Dr. Stone to see how accurate all the science and technology in this TV show really are. Well, okay, for one, nitric acid is like clear. So if it's yellow, there's something else going on in that mixture. How in the world did that guy smell his finger and go, oh, nitric acid? Like, how does he know what nitric acid smells like? This guy seems like one of those people who like he'll smell a glass of wine and he's like, Oh, okay, yeah, this is from France. I'll give you like an address and like somewhere in France where it was distilled. Not to mention that nitric acid is really corrosive. So if it just dripped on your finger like that, you wouldn't just be casually walking off into the distance. You'd probably be screaming in pain because it would burn very much. Like you'd have to just leave your finger running under water until the acid just comes off your skin. <laughs> Alright, uh, well, so like so far, like what he said is like, yeah, not all chemical reactions will take the same amount of time. I mean, usually if you mix two liquids together, those tend to be slightly faster than if you're like pouring the liquid onto a solid. Your body does contain a lot of metals, and I mean, the first one that comes to mind is iron, which is probably the most abundant. Iron is a part of the protein hemoglobin, and what hemoglobin does is it takes the oxygen in your blood and it just carries it all around your body where it's needed. Hemoglobin is red, which is also why your blood is red. There's a lot of red blood cells in your body, so the idea here being that although like all the iron in your blood surfaced and solidified so that you were just encased in stone, I don't... Yeah, no. <laughs> um, I think if anything like that was to happen, you'd be dead long before that process would ever take place. But for the sake of the TV show, yeah, let's just go with it. <laughs> Senku is really impressive, man, because I, I mean, I've been living in this same city for over 20 years and I have not a clue with the latitude and longitude of where I live is. Now more on the stone statue, there will be some landmarks that survive even thousands and thousands of years of weathering and erosion. The most common example I can think of are the pyramids of Giza and the giant sphinx. Those have been here for the longest time and they always have sand just bashing up against the rock, yet they're still standing. I'm more surprised that they haven't found any sort of plastic items. I mean, granted it has been a couple thousand years, so they might just be like buried underneath the dirt, but Considering that plastic doesn't decay and all the plastic that's ever been produced still exists right now, I find it really hard to believe that they haven't come across any of it. More than ever, this show has got me really interested in how they're going to just survive and how he's going to rebuild a civilization through science. Like, I really like this show. I mean, whoever suggested it in the comments, like, thank you so much. Like, this is really interesting at this point. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, just go ahead and give me a thumbs up and comment down below if there's any other movie or TV show that you want me to commentate over. As always, guys, stay fresh and stay golden.